Amen. Amen. James 1 and 2, James um, chapter 1, verse 2 and 3 says, My friends, consider yourselves fortunate when all kinds of trials come your way. For you know that when your faith succeeds in facing such trials, the result is the ability to endure. We're going to look to Hebrews 12 and 2 which says Jesus on whom our faith depends from beginning to end he did not give up because of the cross on the contrary because of the joy that was waiting for him he thought nothing of the disgrace of dying on the cross and he is now seated at the right side of God's throne shall we pray Father, we thank you for another opportunity to come into your presence today, to gather amongst other believers, to gather amongst other friends. God, we just thank you for another opportunity. Lord, we just honor and we praise you for who you are, God. You are the Lord of lords, the King of kings. You are the ruler of all nations. You are the Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are our strong tower, God. And because of who you are, God, we look to you, God. We look to you, God, for everything that we have coming in uh, ahead of us, God. We look to you, Lord, for everything that you have set for us to have. God, we're looking to you. We're looking to you with our faith, God. We're looking to you for you established everything from the beginning and we're trusting you with our end, God. So we're looking to you for everything. God, we pray right now that you forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of unrighteousness, God. Create within us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Let our light so shine so that men would only see you, God, and you receive all glory, honor, and praise, God. We love you today, God. We bless your holy name, God. We honor you, God, because in January 2020, none of us knew that we would be here today in the last the last week of December of 2020, God. And for whatever encompass between those times, God, we want to say thank you, God. We consider it all joy, God, because we know that you were with us all along, God. We consider it all joy, God. For you, we know that your hand was, was there and, and you were there just pushing in and you were there just loving us and you were there, God, for everything that we need, God. But we didn't, we may have lost our our faith, God, in some instances, Lord. So we're asking you right now in the name of Jesus, God, that those who may have lost uh, faith, God, God, that you would increase our faith, God. Help our unbelief, God. Let us know that you were there in January and you're still here in December, God. So we thank you right now for everything that has happened, God. We thank you, God, for building our faith in these times, God. We thank you, God, for, for allowing us to trust and believe in you, God. We thank you, God, for never leaving or forsaking us, God. We thank you, Lord, that this time right now, we can look to you for our next, God. We can look to your word to stand on, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for every St. Paul partner, God, in the name of Jesus, God, for everything that we have endured, God, for every every visitor, God, every friend, God, every, every person that's tuning in, God. We thank you, God, that we have all gathered here in your name, God, and we're trusting you for our next God. We may not know exactly what that is, God, but we know who you are, God, and we know that you have everything in control, God. So we thank you today, God, for this last week of December, God, but none of us knew if we would make it, God, but we want to honor you, hallelujah, for being our Lord and Savior. We want to honor you, hallelujah, for being our sustainer, God. We want to honor you, hallelujah, for being our Waymaker God, hallelujah, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, because we didn't know God, but you knew God, even though we couldn't see God, but you saw God. But because we have faith in you, God, God, and even if we lost some of our faith, God, we're asking you, God, 
we're thanking you for, for never leaving or forsaking us, but we're asking you to help us, God, to help us to continue to strengthen our faith in you, God, because you've proven yourself over and over and over again. And we love you for it today, God. And we ask, God, that if our sister or brother, God, needs to be strengthened in their faith, God, that you would help them, God, to strengthen their faith, God. Let us be examples, God, that, 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 that you are able, God, that you are, you are, you are willing, God, and you will do exactly what your words declares, God. So God, we thank you today and we love you. We honor you. We pray right now that the word that is coming forth, God, that would have strengthened us all the more, Lord. And we thank you for the, 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 the deliverer. We thank you for the vessel that you shall use to bring the word, God. And we pray right now that you will strengthen us, God. Hallelujah with your word, God. Let us long again for you, God. As the deer pants, like, let us long for you, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah, God. We love you today, God. And we honor you. We bless your holy name, Lord. We just want to say thank you. We praise you and we honor you. We pray that every person here today will hear the word and that we will never leave, never be the same, God. And we just want to say thank you, Lord. We bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 amazing St. Paul family. I pray, we pray, Pastor G and I have been praying that you would have an amazing holiday season, but it's about to get better. Even if it was incredible, it's about to get better because we have figured out what to do with New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. God has spoken a vision to me about it and it's going to be absolutely amazing. Those two days are going to be life-changing as you prepare to turn the page on 2021. December 31st from 5 to 8 o'clock p.m., the church will be open and we are creating something called Cleansing the House. You're going to bring a bottle of oil with you and your family. And I pray that you will come as a unit. We're going to, you're going to bring a bottle of oil and then you're going to walk through the sanctuary. It will be designated what direction you will go in. Mask on, physical distancing, temperature check, all that to make sure that everyone who enters will be safe from 5 to 8 p.m. And as you walk through the sanctuary, you're going to be praying that the Lord will cleanse your house of this 2020 spirit, but more importantly, and equally important rather, that the Lord will cleanse the church that you have been committed to. And so as you walk through, you're gonna come stand in front of me, I'm gonna stretch my hands out, and I'm gonna pray for you and your family. I'm gonna declare blessing over you as you prepare for 2021, turning the page. And then the next day, January 1, at 12 o'clock noon, we will be at the old landing, now known as the Riverbank Park. We will be there for a time of celebration, a time of commemoration, and a time of refreshing. For this day, that day will be known as a celebration of peace, 
healing and refreshing. And here's what I want you to understand. January 1 is a ticketed event. And so you have to go on St. Paul's um, website, spnbcjax.org, or you have to find the link and you have to uh, f go through the event right process so that you can secure your spot. As of now, over half of the tickets are gone. And so I'm encouraging you, if you wanna be a part of January 1, to hurry up and get your ticket because we only have 500 slots, but we're expecting it to be gone. The Citadel and St. Paul have come together. So we're expecting it to be gone. It's gonna be amazing. We're going to honor and celebrate our first responders. We're going to acknowledge those who have died of COVID-19 in our city. And we're going to celebrate those who got it, but God brought them through. And we're going to use the oil from the day before to as well anoint the grounds of our city. Because we're believing that 2020, God's going to turn it. And so Bishop Terry Hill and I and the Citadel Church and the St. Paul Church, we are coming together to do something amazing. December 31st, cleansing the house. January 1st, filling the house. Make sure that you get your oil, that you meet your bishop on December 31st. And then on January 1st, meet us all downtown as we celebrate God. But remember, you got to get your ticket. So secure your ticket. Go on the website and get your ticket right now so you can have your spot. We want as many people as possible to be there on December 31st and on January 1st. We love you. And remember this, St. Paul is turning the page on 2020 and we're expecting victory. So join us December 31st at the church and then January 1st downtown at the Old Landing. We love you. Be blessed. Let's get ready for an amazing day. And welcome to St. Paul Church of Jacksonville, where our senior pastor is Bishop John E. Guns. Here at St. Paul, it's all about Kononia, which means it's all about love, it's all about people, and it's all about Jesus Christ. We are striving to be the most caring, covenant, Christian community the world has ever seen. This is the first Sunday after Christmas. We pray that you had an amazing time just focusing on the goodness of Jesus. Remember, Jesus is the reason for the season. We look forward to seeing you on this Friday, January 1st, in our amazing community service that we will have downtown, where it's formerly known as The Landing. So make sure you meet us there at 12 o'clock p.m. Well, we have an amazing word for you today. We are so grateful for you. Sit back and enjoy the service, and then his, listen to what God has for you today. God bless. We love you. Mwah.
demanding, and yes, painful years that the globe has ever experienced. But despite it all, we're still here, we're still standing, and because of that, we are confident in who our God is. Today, as we share this message from the cookbook, I've just been feeling this in my spirit, so we're going to take a moment, and we're going to encourage you, and we're going to get into the Word. In the course of this pandemic, God's given us music. One of the songs he gave us was a song of encouragement for those who would embrace what God is trying to do. And so I want you to be encouraged today. My soul craves you. <laughs> My soul desires you. So I repent. I want to encourage you with this. So I repent. Oh, my soul craves you. My soul desires you, so I repent. So I repent. One more time. Everybody who believes it, that my soul craves you. My soul desires you. So I repent. 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 Oh, so I repent. And I cry out to you, Lord. And I hold on to your word. And I desire to know you better after everything I've been through. So I declare that my heart belongs to you. Listen, I want you to turn with me to Numbers chapter 13. 
Thank you, Jay, or as I affectionately call him, Tonto. <laughs> He's with me today, and I'm so excited. So I want you to turn with me to Numbers chapter 13. And I want you to hear what God wants to say on this last Sunday of the year. All I've been hearing over the last several months is better days are coming. But as we have now approached this last Sunday of the year, and we are now going through six days of devotionals entitled uh, Turning the Page, I want to declare today that God has a desire for you to come out of this season better than you went in. And so I want you to understand that God wants you to experience momentum. Everyone say momentum. In Numbers chapter 13, then, verse 1 and 2, it says, The Lord said to Moses, Choose one of the leaders from each of the 12 tribes and send them as spies to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. I want to declare that God wants your life to experience the kind of momentum that will be so extraordinary until you will now walk in a season of possession coming out of what appeared for some of you to be a season of loss. What is momentum? Momentum is, is, is a physics term and it refers to the quantity of motion that an object has. A sports team that is on the move, they say has momentum. Momentum then is movement. It's something that cannot be determined by the forces outside of it because now something internal, intrinsic is pushing it forward. I want to also suggest that momentum is about something new, something recent, something that is full of or renewed in vigor. God wants you to experience new energy even in the midst of this. And he wants you to be driven by a fresh wind that will actively, aggressively cause you to pursue what the Holy Spirit has clearly discerned that God wants you to walk in and to possess. God then has called you to, to God has ordained you to possess, to walk in authority, to walk in victory. Yes, even in the midst of this. And so as we end 2020 with all of its challenges, I mean all of its challenges, this pandemic filled with, filled with, police, filled with police brutality, this pandemic filled with, with political divide and division, this pandemic filled with hatred and anger, this pandemic filled with racial, in, in, racial inequities, this pandemic, Feel with all of its challenges, I want you to understand that even in the midst of all of it, God wants you to walk away stronger than you went in. And so I want you to hashtag, God wants me to have it. See, one of the reasons why so many of us are lacking is not because God doesn't want us to have it, but we don't understand the authority by which we've been created in and the capacity that is ours if we fully embrace what God has ordained for our lives. Years ago, I purchased my first iPad. And, and all of the commercials on TV showed the iPad as this amazing device. But for some reason, my iPad didn't do what everybody else's iPad did. Finally, after a discussion with A.D. Roberts, it came, to, it came to my awareness that the iPad was not lacking. My lack of understanding was the issue. For many of you, it's your perception. It's the way you understand yourself and the way you relate to God based upon that perception. But here's what I want you to get. As John Calvin wrote, true wisdom consists in two things knowledge of God and knowledge of self. The willingness then to position yourself before God ensures that there are times that even when we are unclear, we are still able to rest in the emerging, evolving recognition of the divine presence. And so we push through the barriers and the boundaries that are somehow placed before us, causing us to feel flawed and faulty. But in the midst of the barriers and the boundaries which causes us to feel flawed and faulty, God allows us to discover who he is and 
then he drives us into a place of extraordinary revelation where we are prepared beyond our incompetence and we are walked into a wonderful place of opportunities in this discernment then, this ability to envision the future through the lens of God's grace, we discover something amazing and here's what it is. We discover that our confession when dripping with confidence will produce something extraordinary and in that moment, nothing can block us and nothing can detain us and nothing can destroy us. I understand that we are human and we do live in our own limitations, but our limitations are not supposed to be our excuse for not possessing the will of God. In this awkward season where so many people seemingly have stories of sorrow, I want to declare that there is still favor, acceleration, and never again. I want to declare that there is still a glorious opportunity for us to walk in what God has ordained. And that's the power of this particular story and this particular encounter between God and the children of Israel. The power of this is that God says to them, do not mismanage or misappropriate this door, even though there is someone who is presently occupying the land that I've ordained for you. I need you to only go spy it out so that it can incite in you the inspiration to pursue your purpose. Here's the genius of God. When God gets ready to take you to new and exciting places, he first allows you to see it. Sight then should not become, if you will, the deterrent to faith. Sight should become the motivation to pay the price for that which you are called and ordained to do. And so here they are on the verge of something extraordinary coming out of Egypt, coming out of slavery, coming out of oppression, coming out of brokenness, coming out of despair, coming out of being humanly disenfranchised, coming out of a space where they have been defined by a, by a system economically which limited their sense of personhood and which distorted their sense of identity. Now here they are standing on the crest of something amazing and God says to them, the challenges are incredible, but if you embrace what I called you to embrace, you will discover something amazing. And here it is, that the revelation of your possibilities is grounded in your courage to walk in obedience. Here's the power then of this, is that somewhere in the middle of this painful season of transition where they're moving from slavery and pain into the possibilities of occupation, God says in the transition stage, Here's what I need you to do. I need you to go see what I have for you. You ready to shout? Because I've already given it to you. Oh, I understand that I don't presently own it, but it is mine. I don't presently possess it in the natural, but because God has already declared it, it is mine. And so what I have to do is have the courage to walk through the door and not be intimidated by the optics of the enemy that appears to be resting comfortably in that which has been ordained for me. And so in this verse, God says something amazing. He says to them, this is what I want you to walk in. This is what I want you to experience. This is what I want to give you because you're my child. Here's the first thing. The first thing God says I want you to have is I want you to have your own. Whew. Verse 1 says, I am giving you the land. I'm giving it to you. Until this time, the Hebrews were a nomadic people. From time, from the time God instructed Abraham to leave his father's house until now they existed in a migrating mode. Yet the promise beginning with Abraham through Isaac and Jacob was that they would possess their own. God wanted them to place their name on it. And so watch this. And by placing your name on it, that refers to authority. So whenever something has your name on it, that means that you now operate in authority. The moment that you sign the papers for your house, you now own the house. And even while you're paying the monthly mortgage, people still say on these applications, are you renting, leasing, or owning? And so in this season, I want you to understand that God wants you to put your name on the vision of your life. God wants you to put your name on your possibilities. God wants you to put your name on your dreams.
dreams. God wants to elevate you because he wants you to have your own hashtag. It's supposed to be mine. It's supposed to be mine. And so while the enemy wants to break you and discourage you, I come to declare that God wants you to have your own. One of the most amazing things that has happened in my life is the moments that God has allowed me to pay off a car or pay off something and then now they send me that which says it is yours and the moment that it is mine I now have the authority to do with it what I want to do with it well God is declaring that in this season I'm trying to give you something that the enemy can't take away but here's the second thing God wants you to have is he wants you to experience freedom from lack verse 27 they told Moses we explored the land and found it to be rich and fertile. And here is some of the fruit. The New International Version said they gave Moses this account. We went into the land which you sent us and it does flow with milk and honey. Here's the fruit. The New Living Translation says, this was their report to Moses. We entered the land you sent us to explore and it is indeed a bountiful country, a land flowing with milk and honey. Here is the kind of fruit it produces. The Berean Study Bible says, and they gave this account to Moses. We went into the land to which you sent us. Indeed, it's flowing with milk and honey. Here's some of the fruit. And the King James says, and they told him and said, we came unto the land whither you sent us and surely it's flowed with milk and honey and this is the fruit of it watch this in Leviticus 20 24 it says but I have promised you this rich and fertile land is your possession and when I give it to you I am the Lord your God and I've set you apart from the other nations two things I want you to notice the first thing I want you to notice is, is that the ones describing it are cynics and doubters here's what's amazing that the people who are describing it are actually people that don't believe that they're supposed to possess it God can give you a blessing so amazing that even your haters have got to celebrate it. You'll get it on the way. That God can bless you so much and so bountifully and God can manifest favor in such an amazing way so people that don't like you have to still call it yours, have to still say it's amazing. Notice how they described it then. A land flowing with milk and honey. Watch this. A land flowing. Flowing means gushing, which means to flow out in a rapid, plentiful stream, often suddenly flowing with milk and honey. Notice that milk comes from cows, goats, buffalo, and sheep. This meant that God was going to favor them and that everything was going to be connected and it wasn't going to be just through one means. God was going to diversify how he was going to gush the favor over their lives. I feel like preaching. I need you to hashtag gushing in my future. God wants to, God wants to gush favor into your life. But the second thing is fruit. Fruit which means Fruit, which means produce and offspring. In essence, God wants you walking in explosive overflow. And he wants your offspring continuing the season birthed in you. Thus, God is releasing gushing and generation. I need you to hashtag gushing and generational. Because when you understand that what God's going to do is not just bless you. He's going to bless everybody connected to you. He's going to bless everything tied to you. 2020 tried to make us doubt God. But 2021 is a year that I firmly believe that the gushing generational authority of God is going to be released. But here's the last thing. And then we're done. And here it is. Watch this, Jay. Uh, in this season, God wants you to have a freedom from lack. He wants you to have your own. But here's the last thing. God wants you to walk in the place of fulfillment. God promised this land to their predecessors. And pass this promise on through Egypt and the wilderness. It begins with Genesis 12, 1, Genesis 12, 7, Genesis 13, 15, Genesis 15, 17, 8, Genesis 50, 24, and Exodus 6, 8. At each stop and stage, God reminds them that this is my promise to you. Fulfillment is about completion, both internally and then externally. Here's the good news. If you are truly walking in your ordained season, God will grant you the ability to live a fulfilled life. I need you to just hashtag one word, fulfillment. God wants you to live a life of fulfillment. Listen at the words of Paul and Timothy as he was standing on the apex of his life, coming to the end, looking over the horizon. He says, I fought a good fight. I finished 
my course. Jesus on the cross says it is finished. Here's the power of this season is that if you make it through this, God's got some things for you that's going to blow your mind. You have to then embrace the fact that God wants you to walk in fulfillment. I'm done. Hey, hey yo, Jay, let's ride, man. And so here's the power of God. The power of God is that God will not let you start and not finish. Let's ride, Tonto. God will not let you start and not complete. Everybody that's ever been ordained for purpose. They have finished the way God wanted. And I've discovered that when you follow God and when you obey God, God will give you the ability to finish in victory. I told you earlier that Jesus declared that it is finished. And three days later, God raised him up with all power in his hand. And because Jesus is my elder brother, because Jesus is my redeemer because Jesus is my liberator because Jesus is the Lamb of God because Jesus is the Rose of Sharon because Jesus is my bright and morning star because Jesus is the lily of the valley because Jesus is my joy and sorrow because I know that he finished I will finish too and so get ready because God is turning the page and gushing and generational is headed your way. And so open your mouth and give God praise and tell God thank you because God, I am a witness that you want me blessed. You want me strong. You want me encouraged. You want me victorious. That's why you remind me every day that this is the day that the Lord has made and I shall rejoice and be glad in it so be encouraged because at the end of it all you shall come out of this season with everything God wants you to have. I'm going to declare it. I'm not going to be afraid to say it. I'm not going to be discouraged by this season. Pastor G, I am believing that in this season, everything that's supposed to be, everything that he's ordained for us shall be ours. So Father, in the name of Jesus, encourage your people. <laughs> Give them the courage to believe that this year has not been wasted. And as we prepare to meet January 1, Father, and as we prepare to turn the page, may we see the manifestation of your grace and your glory. Thank you, Father, that we get to end the year on a high note, <laughs> and we get to end this year declaring that you want me to have it. If you're unsaved, unchurched, or you need a church home, Right now, I want you to put in the thread, prayer or partner, prayer, partner, or salvation, wherever you are in that, prayer, meaning I want to, I, I need you to pray for me, partner, I want to connect to the church, salvation, I need to give my life to Jesus Christ. If you're in any one of those, put it in the thread right now. Let me encourage you by telling you that in this season, God wants you to have it, but you got to believe it. He wants you to have it. Father, in the name of Jesus, let no one who's heard this message walk away not confident that you want them to have it, that you've ordained for them to walk in it. In the name of the Lord Jesus, give courage, give confidence, give peace, and give assurance. And we shall live in assurance that all things work together for good. In Jesus' name, amen. This is January 1st. We're going to be down at the Old Land. If we want you to join us, make sure that you go to Eventbrite, get your ticket, because we only have limited seating. So why not jump in right now? Here's the other thing. We need volunteers. I'm sure we're still going to need them. And so why not volunteer and be a part of this amazing experience? January 1, it's going to be incredible. So join us as we turn the page on 2020 and we prepare to be refreshed for 2021. Pastor Gene, I love you guys so much. We thank you amazing. And thank you for walking with us through this difficult, yet evolving, emerging, and, de and defining year. Thank you for being 
our family. For all of you that are not St. Paul in church partnership, but you're St. Paul in global connection, thank you for being connected to us. Typically, we sing the song and you hear it sung in a way that is pre-recorded, but this time I'm gonna close the year out. Because actually, when the song was written by Brother Meacham Clark and I, it was written as a pastor's benediction, as the heart of a leader to his people. There were Sundays I would, used to, I, I would sing this, and I would begin to weep, because my heart for you is that God will cover you. You all know I say this all the time, I'm not much of a singer, so don't hear my voice, hear my heart, as we end 2020 through virtual worship. Be encouraged. Pray that God will cover you and all will be well. Pray that God will cover you and all will be well. Pray that God will cover you and all will be well. I, I pray that that God will keep you no harm will come your way pray that God will keep you no harm will come your way pray that God will keep you no harm will come your way I January 1.